Lately, Scythe has been on a wild run. They release fan after fan, cooler after cooler, with Scythe's new identity, black and black with a whole lot of black. This is the Scythe Mugen 6 Dual Fan Edition, and this thing is freaking amazing. It follows a very similar approach as we had on the Mugen 5 RFC previously, a single tower featuring six heat pipes. However, a few things did change. Obviously, the color, but we did kind of had a black edition before, no, the most important change would be the fans. For the longest time, Scythe has been using their Kaze Flex fans for all of their coolers. And that's now over, cause for the new Mugen 6, they switched over to the brand new Wonder Tornadoes. These are spinning at up to 2000 RPM, featuring a fluid dynamic bearing and a PWM connection, and they can push up to 60.29 CFM at up to 2.45 mm of H2O. So these are pretty balanced fans, but they are quiet, like, like really quiet. And design-wise, they do look awfully similar to what Nokia does, just like with a non-eye cancer inducing color pattern. And we got the old school scythe rubber corners all around. But right after this review, I will steal those fans of this cooler and pretend like I got them individually for a fully fledged review. But for now, let's just focus on the cooler like as a whole. Another change from the Mugen 5 Ref C is actually the amount of fans. Where previously the Mugen was a single fan, single tower cooler, the Mugen 6 exists in both a single fan and a dual fan edition. Just keep that in mind, cause everything what I'm going to say about this video is about the dual fan edition, not the single one. Size-wise, the whole cooler also got some changes. Now the heatsink is 130mm wide, opposed to the few millimeters more on the Mugen 5 Ref C, but important to note here, where the heatsink on the old one was, how should I say, it was slightly pushed together towards the center, so we had like this structure. And on here we got a very symmetrical block, so it's not like we really lost something in total. The height is pretty much identical at 154 millimeters, so it's a relatively compatible cooler overall for mid-tower cases, but if you put one next to the other, the new one looks kind of taller, and that's because the old one had relatively big outsticking heat pipe ends, whereas the new one ends in a beautiful matte black plate with that stamped out scythe logo. Beautiful. And what the heck is this? But the width actually changed a bit. At about 80 mm thickness, the heatsink is now slightly thinner. But there are also changes like to the better, like the change in base and heat pipe design. Very similar to what Arctic did with the Freezer 36, the new Mugen has its inner lines of the six heat pipes of the three inner ones further outside. And the base might still be made out of nickel plated copper, but now it's slightly bigger at 43 by 40 millimeter. But the most important change would be about the heatsink fin stack, where previously we had 38 fins on a total of 97 millimeter worth of fin stack, we are now looking at 55 fins on 109. And if we calculate that, that would be like 0.5 fins per millimeter, whereas before we had 0.39 fins per millimeter, which means we have a much denser heat sink and thus we have more potential heat that can be dissipated, which definitely explains the shift in fan choice and the dual fan edition. But before we talk about performance, let's cover the rest. The Mugen 6 dual fan edition comes in the usual or the new type of scythe packaging containing installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, two fans, an instruction manual, the usual clear red screwdriver, some thermal paste and a PWM splitter. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to reposition the outsticking ends of the backplate according to our socket and position it behind the motherboard whilst putting on the spacer on the outsticking threads. Then we need to take the appropriate retention bracket for our socket, the ones with one hole are meant for LGA1700 and the ones with more are for the older socket and position them with the edges pointing outwards on top of everything and then screw everything down. Over on AMD we need to remove the pre-installed retention bracket and replace them with the spacers with the rubber side towards the top, then add the AMD retention brackets in an outward mending orientation and screw them down using the long AMD screws. And then for both sockets, thermal paste and screw the heatsink down by using that extremely ugly and design destroying hole. And don't forget the fans. And now let's finally talk some performance. We benchmark 
all of our coolers on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. First we benchmark max performance on each of them and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps whilst also measuring the noise to create a noise to performance curve. At 120 watts, which would be like the most gaming-like workload, the Mugen 6 performed relatively well. At 34.6 degrees C above ambient, it beat the old Mugen 5 Ref C by a landslide, which was kind of expected given it's a single fan versus dual fan situation, but we also got the Fuma 2 and Fuma 3 which were both beaten. And overall it landed pretty high for a single tower air cooler right next to the Andor 5 Fortis 5, which finally enough is somewhat equally sized. Another honorable mention would be the Arctic Freezer 36 Black, which is still pretty far away from that Mugen 6. But I also said before, given the 2000 RPMs of these Wonder Tornadoes, they are surprisingly quiet. Compared to other important alternatives, the Mugen 6 stands really well. At the beginning it was slightly behind the Noctia NHD 15, but it quickly caught up and went straight down to Noise Lord. And once the fans are spinning slower than full speed, the Mugen 6 actually outperformed the Arctic Freezer 36. Over on 250 watts, the Mugen 5 landed on pretty much the same spot at 66.4 degrees C above ambient. It is pretty identical to other single tower dual fan coolers like the Ender 5 Fortis 5 or Noxia NHU-12A. And compared to the Fuma 3, it actually still has the upper hand. But the biggest difference can be found compared to the previous gen. At 74.2 degrees C above ambient, the old Mugen 5 Ref C was barely capable of withstanding the load where the Mugen 6 does this with ease. And I'm not yet sure of how much this can be attributed to like a dual fan situation. But as a like cooler versus cooler comparison, this is huge. And the noise to performance ratio on 250 watts is actually identical to the 120 situation, just with bigger gaps. It still starts off slightly behind the Noctia NHD 15, but it then quickly follows up outperforming it and the Arctic Freezer 36 making a fairly steep decline down to noise floor. At 320 watts it was game over. Of course it was. There are only a few dual fan dual tower coolers that can pull off 320 watts like on a permanent workload basis. But the Scythe Mugen 6 just isn't isn't the first single tower cooler that can do it. As a whole the Mugen 6 is an excellent single tower cooler. In the past Scythe always had the upper hand when it came to noise to performance but they never were like the max performance kings. With the Mugen 6 it's not like that anymore or at least not to that extent. If we compare it head to head against for example Arctic Freezer 36, the Freezer still has the upper hand in extreme situations but that's only for so long as you leave both fans spinning at max speed. As soon as you even touch the fan curve, the Mugen takes over or the Mugen takes the lead with a significant win over the three Freezer 36 the further you go down. And this becomes even more obvious once you throw in the NHD 15 into the mix. There the Freezer 36 just had a brief moment where it outperformed the NHD 15, but the Mugen just has a brief moment where it doesn't outperform the NHD 15. And it doesn't even matter if you're gaming or if you're working, the Mugen 6 is an excellent cooler. So compared to the previous gen, Scythe made some significant upgrades here. The Mugen 6 turned out great. I would still like to know how much this stems from like the dual fan situation but this is change that I would consider very much worthy of calling an upgrade. And as for now I got really nothing to nag, like nothing. The cooler is excellent, very capable for your i5, i7, r5, r7, not a 9. I wouldn't use this on a 4900k 7950x, those that can push far above 250 watts if they want to, but for anything below that, excellent. And the same goes for the price, at 53 euros right here and now, I got nothing to nag, it's fairly priced. But I need to think about something. Oh, what is this ugly hole? Yeah, that, that hose is, is like really, really ugly. Oh, it's ugly. But okay, this should be all for Scythe and their Mugen 6 in dual fan edition. And at this point, a huge thank you to Scythe for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance except for the NDA stuff because you know I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat but it will also serve to fill that hole. And that's not like an advertisement for my upcoming OnlyFans. I, I just mean it. Just fill that hole with whatever. It's ugly. Anyway thank you for watching and if you want to continue have a look at the Fuma 3. 
and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.